Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about flex, the correct flex, are you playing the correct flex, and maybe whether together we could find a definitive answer to the question, which flex should you be playing? So here are two shafts. Uh, softer, stiffer. Um, I've got a rogue driver and a flash. Uh, epic flash driver, but there's not an awful lot of difference in the feeling of the club weight. So if there is any feeling, change of feeling for me, it's going to be the shaft. And I feel a different feedback with the softer club than I do with the harder club. The question is, why? I have the feeling with the stronger shaft that I can accelerate it and still keep control of it. And I think that is because of the forces which are being transferred from the shaft and the club onto my hands and the time that it takes for it to transfer these forces onto my hands. Which flex should we be playing? If you have been watching the channel recently, then you know that one, I changed the shaft I was using in my driver and my fairway wood because I found I was getting a little bit too much dispersion in the shot and that actually helped me. So I'm most certainly um, of the opinion that a change of shaft and finding the correct shaft for your swing type, for your swing speed will definitely be advantageous. Uh, the question is, is there a definitive way of doing this? Is there a, a definite scale that can tell me um, this is the shaft type that I ought to be playing. Um, if you have been watching the channel recently, then you know I've been talking a lot about the forces that the golf club is applying to the golfer. And uh, because of my knowledge of those, I can hypothesize about which uh, uh, forces are relevant when you change the flexibility of the shaft in your golf club. Um, up till now, the manufacturers have really kept us a little bit in the dark. Even myself as a, uh, a Callaway player um, don't really know the answers to why you should be playing a soft shaft because you have a slow club head speed. Um, obviously, uh, we're told that if you have a lighter shaft, you'll be able to swing it quicker. If you have a softer shaft, it will cause um, a higher launch trajectory. Um, but the research that I uh, read from Sweden, and I shall leave a link down below, contradicts that. In their research, they're saying that irrespective of flexibility with robots and human players, there was no change in the shaft deflection at impact. And by shaft deflection, we're talking about how far the shaft was bent forward at impact, although all were. Um, but they were bent more or less the same and therefore it had no effect on the impact position or the launch angle, which is what the manufacturers are telling us they do. So what is it that the shaft does if it isn't responsible for those things? So what I want to do today is kind of run through just a, a very quick kind of glossary of what we did in the last video and what I think is important then with your choice of shaft. And then I want to reach out to you. I would really love it if you would go out and, and have a shaft fitting or see if there's a place in the air in your area where you could try a driver with three different flexes and take a very soft one, a middle one and, and, a, and a stiff shaft and see whether you can actually, based on what I'm going to tell you today, feel the difference. So let's just go back into the, the theory for a little while. I, I love it and I know you do and this is one of the reasons I think I can reach out to you guys and girls because they get an awful lot of really great feedback and Ted, I hope you're watching because uh, this, this should uh, be a doozy and give us something to do in the winter months, if not straight away in the middle of the season. So if we run through the swing just quickly, as you start the club away, 
Um, the club is going to resist it simply because of its mass. And there you could expect there to be kind of a bending of the shaft um, towards the target as you move the handle away from the golf ball. And that will increase as you hinge your wrists and basically apply force to the shaft, which will also make it almost toe down a little bit at this position. But as the hand uh, hinging slows down, the shaft will try to overtake. Again, don't remember, forget that you've got the mass up here in the club head. And when I slow down the grip end, then the club head is trying to overtake me. So this is the more kind of traditional kind of uh, bend we're expecting in the shaft. And uh, you get a little bit of kind of positive droop there where the head's kind of trying to go over your, your shoulder. Um, most certainly a lot of fitters are very interested then in the so-called transition in this kind of change from the backswing into the downswing. Um, there are people who uh, do that very progressively and I something that I would try and teach if I find somebody getting a little bit too hectic at the top of the backswing but you'll also get guys who are really giving it a, a change of direction and a real tug at that position and that's obviously going to load the shaft. Um, if you are using a softer shaft uh, then you're going to get more bend in that shaft and similarly, if you are using a harder shaft, you're going to have less bend. And the tendency, obviously, is if you tend to have a very sharp transition, you would, you would be helped by having a stiffer shaft. More about that in a moment. Um, then as you bring the club down, you accelerate the arms and hands. And around about hip height or just before, your hands and arms start to decelerate and the bend in the club changes once again. And this is where the club is trying to overtake you. So it's bending forwards. Um, obviously, gravity is also pulling it down. This is what we call droop. And to a certain extent, because of the, the center of gravity and the club being further away from the shaft, it will be trying to close. Um, for that, obviously, the torsion of the shaft will be dependent how much rotation you can actually get in the shaft. And as we come down into impact, we've been talking about uh, using equal and opposite forces on the grip end to stop, basically, the club being pushed back or the handle end being pushed back. And you'll get those pictures then of people who have actually made a good turn, but their hands are still kind of behind them and the club has overtaken. So the general rule, if you think about it, is that um, if you have a slow swing, you should be playing a very soft shaft and a light shaft. If you have a fast swing, you should be playing a stiff shaft um, and a harder shaft. If you have a fast transition, and put a lot of forces on the club at the top of the swing, a harder shaft and less forces. Um, than a softer shaft. But is this true? And what are the advantages if you do that? Um, again, everybody seems to be on the fence, at least the scientists who have tried to constructively look at this. And if there's something the shaft industry know, then it, they're not really telling us, are they? Um, because even as a fitter, a lot of my um, choice of shaft for individuals is based really on my experience. Um, I've seen it work with similar swing types. So at the moment, really, all you can do as an end user is find somebody who does a lot of fitting because he'll have a lot of experience. Even better, somebody who has an eye for a golf swing, a golf professional, uh, or at least a teaching professional, who can actually see whether you have a quick transition, a slow transition, maybe they can actually see from their experience you have a swing type which will profit from one shaft or another and they will fit you into the shafts that they know um, work with that kind of swing type. But for you to be objective as an end user about it, I think to a certain extent the only thing you're going to be able to do is go on your feel. Now, when I swing a golf club, um, I can automatically tell from feel if this is a soft 
or a hard shaft. But how do I do that? Well, basically it's all about the feedback I'm getting in my hands when these things happen. And if you think about it, the flexible shaft is simply giving you feedback quicker when you change the speed of your arm and hands. So as you stop here, that's going to happen quicker with a soft shaft. And that means I'm going to feel that in my hands quicker. Similarly, as I slow down here, that's going to happen quicker and I'm going to be able to feel that. You've got to imagine the club is trying to go in this direction and when it reaches its maximum point of deflection, it's going to come back and that's going to change the feeling in my hands. So to a certain extent, what will actually happen is the club will overtake and then come back and you will have a pressure in one direction and then in the other on the hands. Now, we are telling poor golfers, sometimes elderly golfers, to play softer shafts, primarily because we've been told they'll swing the club quicker. That might well be so, because there's less weight in the shaft. But if they do that and the shaft overtakes, reaches its full deflection and comes back, it's actually reducing club, club head speed and not increasing it. Also, because this transfer of energy is happening quicker, they have to react quicker. And obviously an older golfer has not got the same reaction time as a younger golfer. So maybe they would be better off playing a slightly stiffer shaft, but a light shaft. So they would have the best of both worlds. Now again, this is me, <laughs> my hypothesis, and something that I actually see when I go into the fitting bay and, and fit people for shafts. Um, I'm not always fitting very soft, whippy shafts for elderly, slow-swinging golfers because I actually find that the launch conditions get worse and the impact position gets worse. And often I will film the golfer so that I can actually see how the impact position is changing, especially the hand position and impact, and whether that the shaft is actually helping them to get their hands a little bit further forward relative to their, their old shafts, if you know what I'm talking about. So this is really what I'm very interested in, in is whether you guys can actually feel this and whether you can start to be a little bit more objective about this feedback. Um, also have a think about the, the axis. I, I told you in, in the last video that when you're swinging the club, the actual axis, the bending point of the club is changing. And to a certain extent, I think the shaft manufacturers are also aware of this and are trying to manipulate this, this axis by changing the middle flex of the shaft. Um, and that will make it the so-called kick point move up towards the hands or down towards the toe. Now, they seem to tell us they're doing this in order to uh, give us more control or to create a higher launch angle. But again, science seems to be contradicting this, at least the limited science that I've been able to read about. So again, I'd be very interested in your feedback. When you take a soft shaft, are you actually hitting it higher? I know the robot doesn't. And on the contrary, if I give a constant robot speed in with a soft shaft, the launch angle will actually go down. And I think this is basically because the shaft is flexing and coming back um, before it's actually hit the golf ball and therefore it's reducing the loft of the club rather than increasing the loft of the club. Um, so you might actually, if you swing the club very fast and the only thing you want to change is launch angle, hit it lower with a softer shaft. Strange old world, isn't it? That's a, an awful lot to digest in one time, but if we try and kind of put it all in a package, I believe that the flexibility of the shaft is more a question of the feedback that the golfer gets than, and his reaction to that than it is the shaft itself. 
I think the shaft is basically saying to the golfer, resist me earlier or later. I think better players are able to resist, resist softer shafts quicker than weaker players. But these better players, because they have so much power on the swing, will profit from a stiffer shaft and have no problem about the weight of the stiffer shaft. On the contrary, weaker golfers and specifically older slow swinging golfers might well struggle with a very whippy shaft irrespective of where the flex point is in the shaft and therefore might well be better off taking a stiffer shaft which is still light. Again, just my hypothesis here, but I'm really, really interested in your feedback. Please leave a comment down below whether you think that was all hogwash or whether you think I might be onto something. Um, whether your experience actually supports the industry's claim that at 60 miles an hour you should be playing a lady shaft at 70, a, a, gent, uh, uh, a light shaft and at 80, a regular shaft if we're talking about irons and 10 miles an hour higher and you'd go in into uh, lady soft and, and regular and stiff shafts in the woods. Um, I am not always convinced that these are the best flexes for the player, although you do see maybe changes in club head speed with a lighter shaft with weaker players. But whether they are actually improving the launch conditions, I'm dubious about. I can't wait to hear from you. Um, if you think this is a good idea, hit the like button. If you think it's a bad idea, hit the don't like button. I don't mind. Um, if you're interested in this thing, please leave a comment down below. Uh, subscribe to the channel. That helps me to come back a little bit more often. And uh, if you hit that little bell down there, it will also let you know the next time that I post a video. Um, I'll leave my philosophy as ever up in the left hand corner of the chat and we'll see you all very shortly. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.